Yo, what's going on, miners? Today, we're going to be talking about Microtik. So let's get right into it. So before we start talking about Microtik and stuff like that, I just want to give a huge shout out to um, one of my viewers, Boinkers. So thank you, Boinkers, for sending me over some risers. Um, he sent me over the, uh, I believe this is the eight cap for the GPU riser. So that way I can make sure I make the correct width and length for the riser shields that I've been working on. And it does look like this one is a tad bit wider. And he also sent me a four cap variant. So thank you very much, Boinkers. I will be printing out some riser shields for you and sending these back with the shields. You know what? Let's go ahead and let's take a like a little sneak peek of the new Mining King webpage that I'm working on right now. It's not all the way developed yet, but let's go ahead and let's take a sneak peek at it. Well, guys, so this is it. This is what I've been working on a little bit. I'm still working on it. There's obviously a couple little kinks over here from the template that I'm using, but I'm still designing it. So I have a link to my pools, my 3D print shop and coming soon. Possibly for sale, pre-built proof of useful work workstation rigs. Um, I got a um, one of my good videos on the proof of useful works. Um, one of the th this video I really do enjoy. And then obviously also the Kingsman YouTube membership perks. There's weekly hash rate giveaways, special members only giveaways. Also, you get access to the Kingsman Discord as well as a discount code for the upcoming 3D print shop. So I'm still developing the site, but stay tuned. So it should be up hopefully within a week or so. So let's get back to this, uh, this networking stuff, man. Um, I'm sorry if I look tired. I was up at like, f like five o'clock in the morning on the road, um, you know, driving down to, um, to do the micro tick training. The guy is about three hours away from me, give or take depends on traffic. It's about two and a half, three hours. Um, so I was, I drove about six hours today just to go do the first day of training. I'm doing training all week long this week. So it's going to be a really long week and today was a shorter day. So the next few days will be three hours longer than today. So it's, it's going to be, it's going to get tough, right? It's going to be crazy. Um, but I did learn a lot about the fundamentals of Microtik. Some, a lot of things that I didn't know before that are just some of the basic things about Microtik. And I wanted to share some of these things on my first day of doing, um, it's, it was more of like an overview of the first day of like a lot of the basic stuff. We did a few labs, you know, um, you know, going over some stuff that we I learned today and demonstrating what I learned and stuff like that. So um, I'm not going to show you that because I don't have a micro tick at home right now. But let's go ahead and let's check out. I, I can kind of demonstrate on a, on a on a different router here. So, so we're going to pretend this net gear, this cheap little you know five port switch here, okay, is a micro tick. Now. There are some older Microtix that do run on SwitchOS, which is an older operating system, so it can only be used as a switch. But mo pretty much most modern uh, Microtix run on router OS, which actually is really, really cool because I'm gonna all the Microtix devices that are router OS are fully configurable, which means that if I wanted to, I can make four of these WAN ports and just this one be a LAN if I wanted to. Um, there's so much cool stuff about router os it's essentially just like the only limits you have for networking even even in the smallest ones they have versions this small by the way and every single device that is not on switch os is on router os is fully customizable every single one of them and they all it, it's all the same software so no matter if you bought this little one or the big one that we're using down at the facility it's still gonna be running the same software, right? So you don't have to learn different softwares or different backends, it's all universal. Um, it creates a standard, right? Um, also, fun fact is compared to Juniper or Cisco, there is no licenses. If you bought the device, the license is here in the device. So you don't have to buy annual, um, you know, perpetual, uh, you know, like licenses all the time. Like some of these licenses are annual, which you have to buy them year in and year out. And there's several thousand dollars, right? Um, that's for like really high end enterprise stuff. But 
Another thing is too, that was really cool with the little micro tick we work with as a demo, right? Is that like even these lights, you know, like all of these LEDs right here, like this isn't a real micro tick, right? It's a net gear, right? But you see like all the LEDs right here, you can configure that to where it's not just blinking for activity. You could have it blink like, I want one right here to blink if somebody is trying to access my network. You can have the second one blink if a user was dropped from the network. You could have, um, you know, all different kinds of stuff, like everything in inside this little box, no matter what it is, if it's running router OS, is fully customizable. The only limitation you have is in here is your imagination. You could do everything. There's scripts. Um, uh, the, the guy I'm working with, he showed me some of his scripts where it will auto configure the network if a new client came online. Like it would automatically just put everything and configure everything. It was insane. Um, they ha um, He does a lot of uh, what's called WISP. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but that's uh, wireless internet service providers. So he provides internet to a lot of people who are in very remote areas. Um, like there's some parts of California in the Valley where they don't have internet. Um, they're just like way off the beaten path. It's like miles and miles before they can get anything that, that is point to point that can do like up to like 50 to 60 miles. So um, if you're looking for really good wireless um, stuff like this, I would suggest Microtech, especially if you're trying to do point to point. It was just really cool to learn some of these features that I didn't really know before about Microtech and how powerful it is that essentially even the smallest one, even like the ones that are like 40 bucks, like this brand new, if they're running router OS, you could do anything you want with it. Now you're going to be limited to the only limiting factor of this is going to be the hardware itself, right? Like this is obviously not going to have the same ASIC chip and CPU as the big boy, like we have at Terra, right? So, the, the only limiting factor, I guess, would be is the actual physical hardware itself, right? But other than that, you could still do VLANs off this. You could do anything. You could do a VPN to this thing. Um, what was really cool is the guy had a freaking, um, a really small um, wireless router. It was called a, a map. And he actually, he actually took it apart underneath right here. And he actually hooked up a connector for a drill battery like an 18 volt cordless drill and he could just put his makita drill battery on it and he could have a essentially a little wireless hotspot on the go and on and it had a few lights and one of the lights was is when it was fully loaded and connected to the wireless network the light would come on that way he knew that everything was good to go and he could log in so you could customize every bit of every single one of these machines that are from microtech I learned about Masquerade today. So let's let's say you had a switch and and a router right here, right? This router is on one nine say it's on the one hundred subnet, like one nine two dot one six eight dot one hundred dot one. This one's on one seven two dot zero dot twenty or whatever, right? Some random stuff, okay? You could and then your PC, like my computer here, is connected to this switch, right? You can masquerade it to where it will forward the information from this 172.20.20 subnet and convert it over to this subnet over here to be able to forward the traffic. Because if your route, look, this is your router, right? It's not going to know about this other subnet here because it, it didn't create it, right? So it won't know how to route the traffic, but it'll know that this has an IP address from this network, though but then it carries over to the 172 network to your computer, right? Masquerade. So really, really cool. Uh, learned about that today. Um, there's just so much to take in with Microtech. Um, I really think if you're a networking guy and, and, and you like having full customizability and being able to um, control your network and um, determine what comes in and out of your network, I don't see why you wouldn't go with Microtech. Um, I'm probably going to uh, eventually convert out of the Draytech and go full Microtech myself uh, at home uh, after starting this course. So uh, I really do like this stuff. Now, 
I know some people are going to be having some problems with the possibly the new ports that need to be opened the flux os um i might be working on a possible solution for that uh so what i was thinking was is there's two ways i could do it right they sell like little micro tick boxes about this big and it looks i'm not going to say exactly the same but sort of right so they're called haps that's the name of the equipment it's just like a little tiny box that's maybe as big as this right but I was thinking is, is I could do content to show you how to set up the HAP to where you could potentially protect yourself and open up those ports and not leave yourself vulnerable on the same subnet that your rest of your family's on, right? With your cell phones and your daily computers and stuff like that, right? To where you could run this and it would be off your, be off a totally different subnet, right? So that's one way that we could do that. And, um, Another way is, is what I was thinking was, is maybe there's some people out there who aren't good at networking and wouldn't feel comfortable trying to set this up on their own, even if I had an instructional video and I get it. There's, it's some, it's not for everybody, right? It's, it's a, a little, it's, it's difficult. Um, it's definitely not, it's above intermediate. It's on the advanced level. So I was thinking is, is I was thinking about maybe reselling them. Like I could configure them to run the flux nodes essentially. Um, and have them pre-configured from the box. Like I would order them, configure them, and have them ready to go for the next person and then and then just resell them. So, you know, I got a few ideas in my mind um, to try to help people with their flux nodes um, because I do believe in network safety and stuff like that. Now, with that being said though, there would be a limitation though. Um, you would have to put your router in bridge mode or put it in a DM or put this in a DMZ. So just another trick for hardening our, 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 our router, right? Or this is what it essentially be, would be a router is how I would set it up, is that you would, one, you would close all of the SSH ports. There's numerous ports and you would only leave one and it would be the Winbox port. And Winbox is the, um, is the program you use to connect to your um, Microtik. And what you could do also is, is there's two things you could do if depending upon how tight you want your security is one, obviously you delete the admin user and create a new user with a very 25 character strong password, as well as you can also whitelist an IP, IP address or IP range. So this, let's just say you're accessing this from 172.10.10.1 is your subnet. Okay, you can only you can put that only either a specific IP address can only access this or you can put the whole range on here, right? As well as you can even take it a step further and enforce the IP knock, which is you have to knock on specific TCP ports to order to be able to communicate with this device. If you do not knock the ports in the correct order, it will um, it will time you out. After three timeouts, you will be, get blacklisted. So um, that is, that's like extra security, right? Learning about Microtik today has been amazing, right? I've learned, um, I haven't said I learned everything because that's not true. There's multiple different uh, certification classes. I think there's about, about 10 in total and I'm only taking two. So, and that, they're the first two basic ones, right? So you have to learn these ones in order to move on to the next one. So I have to start here. Um, Another interesting fact uh, that most people don't know is, is there's only 700 trainers in the entire world. Now, the last course you have to pass is so difficult that the guy who's teaching me has said that he's known several network engineers for Microtik that cannot pass that test that have been network engineers for 10 plus years, and they still can't pass that test. It's the hardest test for Microtik. So um, I just think that's crazy that there's only so many in the world that could actually pass the actual training test, right? And um, obviously the guy that I'm, that's teaching me is, is, is a fully certified trainer. And to actually even become a trainer, they actually fly you out to uh, uh, Latvia, which is where Mikrotik, um, that's, where they're, that's where they're located is in Latvia, which is right next to Estonia. That's, that's just really cool. I've learned so much today. 
I figured I'd share a little bit with you guys. Um, I figured maybe I might do a video every night when I get back. Um, I'm not going to edit too much because I'm really tired. Um, I drive six hours and plus I, I do the courses and stuff. So um, let me know now in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about this idea about making this box and maybe doing a how-to video or maybe pre-configuring it for people who are maybe not wanting to take on that kind of challenge. And I know it's going to be really difficult, but maybe I might be able to think of a way to get this where it's fully already built for the user. So, all right, guys, this is the money can giving you the most hashes and I'll see you next time.